What's up, everybody? My name is Joe Brown. This is Heresy Financial. I've recently been reading Ray Dalio's new book, Principles for Dealing with the Changing World Order. It's a fantastic book. I highly recommend it as I recommend his other books. I will link this one in the description below. But what he does is fascinating here. He takes a very long-term approach, studies the rise and fall of great empires, and comes up with archetypical cycles that happen on the way up and on the way down for great global powers. So today in this video, we are going to take a look at the long history of nations, of empires, great powers, how they have risen, how they have fallen, and what factors are determinants in the changing of a world order. Ready? Let's dive in. I know it's popular to say that uh, those who do not study history are doomed to repeat it. However, the forces of history have so much momentum and are so much greater forces that change the path of the entire world, that have countries and cultures and nations and empires rising and falling. These are forces that just because you or I study history, we're not going to be able to change that. So the world more than likely will fall into the same patterns as it always has. But that's why studying history is necessary, not so that you, the world won't be uh, subject to repeating the same patterns, but so that you can recognize those patterns and navigate them yourself successfully. And the more you study history, the more these patterns become very apparent. So we are going to start off here taking a look at uh, this chart by Ray Dalio, the relative standing of great empires. And this is one of the charts that I find absolutely fascinating from this book. He's the chart, the three charts that we're going to look at today there. He's posted them on his website and on LinkedIn. So these charts are uh, in the book as well. Uh, and uh, they're absolutely fascinating here. So you can see it goes back to 600 uh, AD. And this, this is a lot of, of data. It goes back very far. And you'll notice that there's a lot of congestion over here on the right side of the chart. That's simply because we have a lot more data, the more recent time periods here. What this chart is uh, uh, illustrating for you is the relative standing of great empires. So we see China many times has peaked and fallen in terms of its relative standing of global power compared to other uh, empires or powers or countries around the world. Obviously, back in this time frame, there was very little data available. But as we move forward in time, we see more and more data come available in order to see the rise and fall of different uh, powers and empires. Some notable ones that I'd like to point out here are going to be this black line, which is the UK. It took a very long time to rise and had a swift kind of fall there. The United States, you can see relatively new in world history, very, very quick and rapid spike there in terms of gaining in global power. And uh, China's kind of the, uh, the old man on the block, been around the block a couple of times, right? Risen and fallen many times before. Let's uh, let's take a look and uh, we're going to zoom in here. And now we are just looking at since 1500. And so we've got a lot more data during this time period on these powers. And we start here is where we really start to see some of these patterns emerge since uh, since over the last 500 years. I want to first take a look at the top, the biggest powers, the empires. Back in the 1500s, we had China up here at the top. The next one to come on the scene, the global superpower, the reigning empire, the Netherlands. After that, we had the UK. After that, United States, which were still at the top. Uh, look at this, though. China up and coming very, very quickly here. So if history repeats itself, what we are witnessing here, there is a decline in power here replaced by the rising power here. Decline in power here replaced by the rising power here. Decline in power, rising power. Decline in power. This would indicate that we are on the verge of seeing a new power, a new global superpower emerge as the uh, as the new top dog on the scene here as we are seeing momentum and direction of the current superpower, the United States change. Now, one thing that I would like to point out here is that uh, you don't always know which one is going to come out top dog. Because if we take a look right in here, this was a messy time period during the 1700s. Now you'll see there's this blue line here. Which country is that? That is France. And so if we take a look Back at that time period, both France and the UK were on the rise. 
both in lockstep. They were they were rising together. That was during the same time that the Netherlands had peaked and was starting on the decline. So at that period of time in history, you would have been it would have been very difficult for any individual investor, let's say, to take a look at the world and say, hey, the Netherlands has peaked and they could very well be on the decline. But which one is going to be the next top dog? Is it going to be France or is it going to be the UK? It would have been very hard to tell the difference. One thing that I'd like to point out here, when uh, when uh, France topped out here and they kind of peaked and then they started their decline. That was the same time period where John Law took over the banking system in France. I've talked about that story many times, but John Law took over the banking system in France, got everybody to give in their gold and silver and then issued paper currency. And then that paper currency was backed by gold, silver, and shares of the Mississippi company. So it was backed by land in the United States that uh, his company owned at that time. He wanted to spend a lot of money to improve the economic system and uh, uh, wealth and uh, agendas in general in France. So he started issuing a lot of money in order to do this. Well, that brought up questions about the value of the currency, but that currency was backed by shares of the company, right? And so people started to sell shares of the Mississippi company thinking, hey, you know, I might want to get out of this before this all collapses. It's looking a little bit risky. It's looking like their monetary policy is a little bit too aggressive. So in in order to keep up the value of his currency, he had to keep up the value of the Mississippi company, the shares that backed up the currency. So he would print more paper money to buy shares of the Mississippi company to keep those prices elevated. So what you ended up having was a very similar situation that we have today where treasuries back up the value of the dollar, but dollars are being printed to buy treasuries to keep up the price of treasuries to keep up. So you, it's like uh, you've got two different things that are, you're scooping water from one leaking boat into another leaking boat and they're scooping water from their leaking boat into your leaking boat. That's not a sustainable solution. That's what happened. That's what caused the decline of, uh, of France right here, right when they peaked and that's what allowed a, a much more monetary and fiscally conservative uh, UK to surpass and then uh, ultimately take that top dog spot in the world. So you might be wondering, okay, well, what causes these rises and falls, the rise and decline of these great powers, these great empires? That's where we're going to take a look at this next chart here. So what he's basically done here is he's taken all the data from the last hundreds and hundreds of years of all of these powers, these countries, these nations that have risen and fallen, and he looks at their education, he looks at their trade, innovation, technology, economic outcomes output, competitiveness, financial center, military, reserve currency, takes all of that data, puts it together. And the, these are the averages. This isn't a uh, projection. This is uh, an, uh, an analyzing of the data that's already happened. This is the uh, this is the structure of what happens when uh, nations, countries, powers rise and fall. What you're looking at here these lines represent, so this first one is blue, that represents education. So this zero, this middle line right here, that is when the empire is at their peak. So you can see here that education is something that peaks, it's a massive part, it's growing, it's the best, far before the power ever gets to the point where they're a global superpower, where they're the reigning empire. That's one of the leading economic or leading indicators of being a rising power is having the best education. Um, one of What's this last one to come on the scene? This is the black reserve currency status. Um, and uh, so that's one of the last things to come on this scene. So if you think about what's going on right now, when did the dollar become the global reserve currency? Well, it's taken a couple of forms, but uh, definitely Bretton Woods is a contender, right? After World War II, the rest of the world had no money, so the dollar became the world reserve currency, but it was backed by gold at that point, and so you could still say at that point it was kind of gold was still the, the global reserve currency, but definitely by 71, uh, it was just the dollar, not backed by anything, and uh, this is one of the last things to come on the scene, and uh, it, it's relatively close to the peak timing of uh, global superpowers. And so you could make a very good case and Ray Dalio makes this case in his book that during the 60s, that was kind of based on these metrics, that was kind of the peak of the American uh, uh, power relative uh, to the rest of the world. Uh, well, you can see here that once you get to this point, where the only thing that's still really standing out for a country is that they have uh, the global uh, reserve currency still, 
Um, everything else is on the decline and you're pretty close to the end where that, that country, that nation, that empire is no longer the reigning top dog, that superpower. That's one of the last things to survive. And because that's one of the last things to survive, that means that when the new power gets on the block, that's one of the last things that comes into play. So when you're looking around the world thinking to yourself, who's the next top dog? It's not helpful at all to look at their currencies, to look at their money. Because the fact of the matter is the dollar used as global currency, global money, will probably outlast America's position as the reigning superpower on earth. That's just statistically, that's what normally happens. And by the time it loses reserve currency status, it's already lost everything else. And there's already a new top dog on the scene and their, uh, their currency then is able to replace it. No problem. And so that's a lagging indicator, not a leading indicator, education, innovation, and technology is this red one. So that is a much, uh, much earlier leading, uh, indicator as well. And, uh, and the other one I'd like to point out here is financial center. That's this pink line. So it starts off basically around the same time as the others there, but financial center being the financial center of the world lasts longer than anything longer than the uh, reserve currency status as well. And there is no debate about this. America is the financial center of the world. The financial markets here are far more sophisticated than you find anywhere else. And there's no debate about that, but that's not a leading indicator. That's a lagging indicator. And again, just like the currency that will probably survive far longer than America's reign as the top dog superpower. By the time that's gone, it's already very apparent. There's already another superpower on the block. There's already a new global power. So anyway, those are the three charts that I wanted to point out for you guys today. To me, they were very fascinating and I love studying history because like I said, it's all about pattern recognition. And when you can see something that's happened over and over and over and over again, it helps you recognize when those things are happening now to navigate them more successfully. Like I said, I will link his book in the description below. I highly recommend it. As always, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.